Wasim. Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Franz Marani from RJ Connect. Welcome to today's webinar for IO Things 4533 programming. Now that you have joined, you will notice that uh, you are muted. And if you have any questions throughout the webinar, please write them out on the chat section. There will be opportunity for your question to be answered at the end of this webinar. So this webinar will also be recorded and available on RJ Connect Tech Hub YouTube channel. So let's start the start. On today's uh, webinar, I'm going to focus on why do you need IOTHINGS 4533 series for your industrial IoT applications, key features including cybersecurity of IOTHINGS 4533, uh, programming languages supported by IOTHINGS 4533 series, how to use C or C++ and Python to read IO modules, and we will and at the end of this session, we'll have the live demonstration on how to read data, uh, how to send data to the local cloud server via MQTT protocol. And without wasting time, we're gonna continue. So let's take a look at IOTHINGS 4533 series for IoT applications. Since most of us are familiar with IOLOGIC and IOPEC, Moxa designed the IOTHINGS Moxa designed these devices for general IoT applications without capability to send data to the cloud. Now that's the problem, and that is why Moxa realized it and invented IoThing series. IoThing series are Moxa's. IoThing series are Moxa's uh, advanced remote IO modular with higher performance, more secure and better user experience, which allow customers to connect up to 64 IO modules on one module. For IO things, it starts uh, like IO logic and IO pack series, which is Moxa's core. And for thin, it connects to the compact size of the cabinet. The reason is nowadays more and more customers want to change the cabinet size to smaller to, smaller to save the cost. The size and the weight of the equipment is, is getting important. And for X, it follows the IoT uh, and industrial 4.0 trend since IT and OT, which is operational technology world, are getting closer. More IT people want to get the data from the field to do the data analytics, but they have no idea what is Modbus. So what IO thinks does is it helps these customers to convert the field side data to IT protocols such as MQTT, SNMP, and RESTful API. It will help IT engineers to easily get the data, to get the data into the cloud. <coughs> and as for things, it's like things smart. It means that for all IO things services, the unit has the capability to do some self-intelligent, also uh, such as event alerts to help customers to do error handling. And IO things consists of two two modules, which is IOTHINGS 4510 and IOTHINGS 4533. And on this presentation, I'll only be mainly focused on IOTHINGS 4533 series, which is a MOXAS Advanced Remote Modular IO, which is programmable. I have already done a webinar for IOTHINGS 4510 series, and if you want, you can check it out on our RJ Connect Tech Hub uh, YouTube channel. So let's take a look on IOTHINGS 4533 series. IO Things 4533 series is an advanced modular IO controller with a unique hardware, making it an ideal solution for a variety of industrial acquisition application. The IO Things 4533 series has a unique mechanical design that reduces the amount of time required for installation and removal to simplify deployment and maintenance time. In addition, the IO Things 4533 support Moxa industrial. Linux, and it has a built-in Azure, Amazon Web Service, and Alibaba Cloud SDK, so that users can easily save field data to different cloud accounts. Here is the overview of the IOTHINGS 4533. The IOTHINGS 4533 supports not only IO modules that we call a 45ML, but also the new 45ML, which are still under development. R means right-hand module, 
and left means the left hand module. The 45 ml module will have communication modules such as serial, LTE, Wi-Fi interface and application modules like high-speed analog input that can be used for vibration monitoring. And below, below here is the, is the specification of IOTHINGS 4533. As you can see that it supports the Linux vision. You can see that the CPU type is dual core A7 1 gigahertz CPU and the operating system is based on Moxa uh, industrial Linux, which is kernel 4.4 and Debian 9. And for memory, it supports 512 megabyte of RAM and has 8 gig eMMC storage and also 6 gigabit for users. And in addition, IO Things 4533 can connect up to 44 IO modules. And please note that the 45 ML modules does, uh, does not support IO Things 4510 series. They are only supported on IO things. I mean, the 45 ML modules are only supported on this uh, module here, 45 IO things 4533. For the hardware overview, you could see that the IO things 4533 supports standard operating temperature and wide temperature. And it also has the uh, dual MAC address on the LAN port, where users has the opportunity to configure the other port as a WAN port and the other one as the local port. And it has a three-in-one serial port where it can, you can configure that as a RS-232 or 422 or 485. And the system can be powered with either 12 to 48 VDC power. And the field power can take only 12 or 24 volts. And on the right-hand side, the unit takes up to Eight uh, takes up to sixty-four modules, and it also uh, sub, uh, on on each of the modules, IO modules. They also have the channel LDEs. So this channel LDEs they help users to 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 check the status of the IOs. Easily check the status of the IOs. And besides this, IO things forty-five thirty-three has as the mechanical design to help customers to easily install and release the module without the tools and screw, which is the tool free installation feature here. Just easily push these buttons here, these clips here, and then you can easily remove the modules. Okay. Now let's take a look at the power calculator for IOTHINGS 4530 series. Moxa has created IOTHINGS 4500 series power calculator which is a simple to use web application where customers can use it to simulate the power consumption for their application. To open the power calculator, you can easily go to Moxa website and navigate under uh, advanced IO controllers, and or you can go to Google and you can type um, iothingscalculator.moxa.com and then it will open for you this page here. And on the top here, you can see that we have the information about the module, the modules here, where it will identify if, let's say, for instance, we chose, and on this presentation, we chose uh, 4533, which takes up to 64 uh, IO modules. It shows you how here we have 64 modules here, and we, all, we only installed 10 here, 10 of 64. And we've got this uh, system power here, information, as well as the field power information here. And what you need, what I, like I said before, that the, the field power can be powered with either 12 or 24 volts. You can switch that in here. If you click here, it can be 12 or you can choose 24 volts. And that will also uh, make changes to your field power here. Sorry. And then to add the modules into the, into the controller here, into the IO controller here, you just navigate into the IO modules here, yeah, you double click the controller that, I mean the, mod, the IO module that you need, then it will be added into the IO module here. Then the more you add the modules here, then you tend to lose the, the power here. You see the available power will be something like minus and or it will turn red, as shown here. The more, as you see, we added up to 12 now, and then now the available power is minus 1.17 watts. So, meaning we need to add a power module now. 
So when you add the power module, it will restore the, the, the power here. So to do that, you navigate into the, into the IO modules, then you select the power module, uh, and then it will be added into, into, your, into the IO controller here. So, but you see there's still no effect that is made on the, on the controller here and also in the, in the IO here. So to, what you need to do is only to, to move this uh, power module one more further and the power is restored. And you can see the available power here now is 2.90 watts. Okay. And you see, if you move it here, now it's no longer rate anymore. And the system power is, the power is fine. Then you can continue adding the module if you still, if you still need that. Otherwise, when you still, when you again run out of the, the, the power here, then you still, and you can add another power module. Okay, that's it for the power calculator. Let's continue to IO Things 4533 solution. IO Things 4533 has a built in Azure, AWS, which is Amazon Web Service, and Alibaba Cloud SDK and OPC UA library. And its value proposition is to help customers to easily manage field site data to the cloud with high computing power and secure the IoT controller. Cloud connectivity, programming languages, control precision, and cybersecurity are the key features of IoThings 4533. As you can see on the diagram here, the, you can take the information here from the, from the field devices, such as the sensor, the power meters, and then you send that into, you can either send it to the cloud, different cloud accounts, to Azure, AWS, Amazon Web Service, and Alibaba. And you can also have, if you need, if you have an OPC, a, a SCADA, you can connect, a, you can connect the SCADA into here and, and, and sync data via OPC UA, OPC UA. Okay. So let's take a look at the programming languages which are supported on IOTHINGS 4533. There are different types of users. So the programming language of the users vary from one programmer to the other. And IOTHINGS 4533 supports C or C++ and Python languages for power users and IT users. The power user doesn't mean the user for power substation. It means the big system integrators who is the application expert. They are already good at a field site and also have the capability to use Linux or IEC 6011-31-3 to develop their own application. What power user need is just a reliable, power, reliable and power controller so that they can do everything by themselves. IT users are good at data processing and analytics, but they have no idea how to collect the data from the field site. So IOTHINGS is helping IT users to collect the field site data and transmit that data to the cloud easily. Now Moxa is busy planning to release the, the vision of the IOTHINGS 4533 which support IEC 61131 based on codices, which is the PLC uh, standard, which targets the power users, IT users, and OT users, which is operational technology users. And the operational technology users are very good at field site installation and data handling, such as uh, EV control, for example. And what they don't have is the knowledge of cloud connectivity and cybersecurity. So I think is helping is, is, is to help those uh, operational technology users to easily connect that data to the cloud and manage the cybersecurity. And the Node-RED vision of the IO Things 4533 is still to be confirmed, but there was some rumors that Moxa is gonna create the Node-RED vision. So we're still not sure whether it's still gonna come or not. Okay. Let us look at the cybersecurity features. And the IO Things 453 follow the basic standard of the basic principle of information security, which is confidentiality, which ensures that there is no the theft of sensitive information or programs in the device uh, 
from the wrongful or unauthorized people. And integrity to show that data cannot be added or removed or modified also by unauthorized people during transmission. And availability to ensure that uh, the device is, cannot be shut down to, due to attackers. And the IOTHINGS 4533 has cybersecurity that is designed from hardware, operating system, and to the application level. And for hardware level, IOTHINGS 4533 support trusted platform modules. And for operating system, IOTHINGS 4533 support Moxa Industrial Linux. And it has a secure boot. And in application level, IOTHINGS 4533 is in compliance with IEC. 62443-4-2 level two, which is to ensure that the data is encrypted and is secured. Now let's take a look on how to read data from the IO things uh, 3533 using the C or C++ sample code that you, you can users can download from the Moxa website. So to get the, the this API. The software package for IOTHINGS 4530 series, users can go to uh, Moxa website, navigate under IO controllers, go to IOTHINGS 4533, and then you click on resources. You go to software package, then you click on the download link. Then it will download the software package into your computer. Okay. Now, if you are using a Windows computer and then you want to transfer the file into the IO things, so you want to copy it over into the IO things, you can open command prompt. So what you need to do is you connect the Ethernet cable from your computer into the IO things, into the IO things 4533. And then you open a command prompt, then you navigate into, into your location where you stored your file. For example, it's under download to Moxa IOTHINGS 4530 series programming guide, IOTHINGS, that's where the file was stored. Then you, you, you type in SCP, then you specify the file name here, and then Moxa is where this the file will be sent at the IP address of the IOTHINGS here. As you can see here, just try to highlight it here. So you need to, you need to copy the sample and the library. The reason being is that, um, the sample code contains the sample code. Uh, I mean, the sample.tar.gz file contains the sample code for both C or C++ and Python, which are the, the, the code that Moxa created for users to, to test if they, can, if they will be able to read the values from the IO modules. They will be connected on the IO things. And the library, the tar.gz file, this one here, this one contains the APIs. That let's say, for instance, if you're developing in Python, you need to import the IO Things uh, 4580 API into your program so that you can be able to use uh, these API files to read those IO modules. Now, you can also use a, Win, a, a file transfer application such as a WinSCP, where you just specify the IP address of the computer, or the IO Things here, sorry, the IO Things and the username and password. Then you click log in and you navigate to where you store the file and then you need to transfer library to title gz and sample the title gz as you can see here they are trans i send them here and they are also under moxa home moxa which is this one here this folder here if you're using a windows command prompt this is where it's going to be stored okay now if once you have done successfully uh, transfer the file into the IO things, you can log into the unit using Party or any other hyper terminal software that you have. On my example, I use Party. So, and then I use a console uh, application, I mean, console cable into the, into the unit. You can also use the Ethernet cable and look into the unit using SSH. But on my example, I used a, a serial, so a serial console port. So you look into the unit, the default username and password is, is Moxa for both username and password. Then what you need to do, you extract the sample code. This is the one that I said it contains 
the sample code for C or C++ and Python for you for the for for the customers to test if they can be able to read the bio modules. Now that you have uh, extracted the file, you can navigate into the C folder by typing in a CD sample IO things and C, then it will take you into that directory. When so you are in that directory, you can build, you need to build the tool chain. This tool chain contains the, uh, the multiple IO uh, files for all the, the supported IO modules on the IO things. So by doing this, you're building them in groups. If you don't want to build them in groups, then you can also build them in individuals. So you can also navigate into the, into the C folder and go to the IO folder here. As you can see here, we we'll go to a sample IO thing C, API, and then IO, IO for input output modules. Then you can make a, 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 the folder here. As you can see here, if you run make to the relay, then it will show you that maybe that file it is already there because we run the tool chain here and we also run make here. But if you haven't done this one, even if you do this, then it will show you that the file has been created successfully. Okay. Now to run the file, you go inside the uh, sample IO things, C, API, IO. If you're not on this directory, you can navigate to this directory. Then because we haven't logged into the unit using, um, uh, we're not on the root account, we're still on the mock side. We need to type in sudo here. As you can see here, you need to type in sudo. Otherwise, if you're on the root, you don't need to type sudo. This is just for administrative rule. Then you specify, you, you write in slide dot forward slash, you specify the file name here. And the minus H here is for help, to help the customer to check, to see which um, arguments or parameters they can pass into the files when they're testing, when they're doing the testing. And you will see that you have a minus S here which is, this, uh, is, to, is used to specify the slot number of the, of the module. So at this thing, uh, uh, on, on this example, it's going to be the relay uh, slot number, which by default is set to three, and minus C is the channel, which is on this example is the relay channel. And then to run the file, you just say sudo dot forward slash relay minus S, then this is the relay one, then minus C is we're reading the first relay, which is reference to zero. Then you press enter, and then this will be the result that you're going to get. You see here, we pass the one, this is the relay slot one, and then we pass zero, this is the relay channel zero. So these values have been passed into this script or this page file here as you run it. And this is the uh, relay value that you get here, okay? And that's it for C++. And let's take a look on how you can use a Python and sample codes to do that. If you haven't copied the file yet into, into the IO things, the same applies to, to the previous slide on the C++. You can either use a command prompt, and then you type in SCP, specify the file name, and then also it is as well as the IP address of the of the IO things here. You can also use a file transfer application such as a Win, Win SCP file here, and you can transfer, navigate into the location where you stored the file, and then you transfer the file. Same applies to that. But if you have, you've already done that, you just keep this portion here, because you already have that. So you need to extract these files here. If you haven't extracted this file for the sample, please do that. Like I said, it contains the sample code that you can use for both C or C++ and Python. So if you haven't done that, you extract this file here. You extract these files. And then, because we haven't, uh, I haven't mentioned library, extract the library on this, on this example here. You need to extract library. And once you're done, you need to install Python. So by doing that, you need to navigate into a library, I think Python, once you inside here, then you enter this command here, forward slash, uh, dot forward slash install that sh. This will install Python into the IO things. And you will have the status here, which shows you that the install is finished and it's okay, right? 
and now you will notice that they will have the image, the message on the on the on, on the on the screen, which shows you that the Python modules will be installed under this location here, which is user local lib Python 3.5 x dash packets. So, for example, if you need to use, let's say, MQTT, you want to send data to the cloud using IO things. So in, if you want to install this service for MQTT, you need to navigate under this folder and install the package in, under this folder here. I'll just show you on the next slide. So on the next slide, uh, just show the example where you navigated into the, into the package, uh, into the Python um, modules folder. I use a local lib, Python 3.5, text passage. And if I say list, then it lists all the modules here, which are under uh, supported on Python here. And you will notice that IO things 4530 is also here. Under this folder here, IO things underscore 4530, it contains IO things um, 4530 API. This API is the one that you're going to import into the into the into your Python script, and I will show you when I'm doing the, the live demonstration. And also, you can also, like I said, you can also un, uh, install the other services. So I installed Power, which is the MQTT service here. So under this Power here, there is MQ, Power.mqtt, which is also going to be important into the script when you, let's say, for instance, you want to publish into the cloud using MQTT protocol, and that's the one here. Okay. Now, to run the, the Python script, to see if you can do that, you navigate to the Python IO module sample code, and you run the, uh, the module script of the IO. As you can see here, if you go to sample, IO things, now we're not saying C, we're saying Python, IO, then you say list, you will have, you will notice that uh, Monksa has already developed this uh, script for you, for the customers here, for the users here to test the analog input modules, digital output, power modules, um, resistance, temperature detectors, and so forth. So now, on this example here, we run um, the relay modules. So we test if we can be able to run to, to, to read the values of the relay. And as I mentioned before, if you specify minus H as a parameter here or as an argument, is for help to see what other arguments you can pass into the script. And same apply to that one. Minus S is for the relay slot or the slot number of the IO. And minus C is the channel that you want to read from. And on this example, we specify relay one. We specify the slot number as one. And then the channel is one. And this is the result. And you will notice that here the relay slot is one, the relay channel is one. Yeah, as shown here, and it shows it retains the uh, the array of the of the of the relay values here. But the one that will be changing is going to be the 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 the, the, the one of the relay that you testing. For example, for relay one, which is this one here, the relay two here. Then if we're testing only this one, it's going to be zero. if we turn it on and off, then it's going to be one or zero. We'll see when we do the live demonstration on this. Okay. So now let's jump into cloud connectivity via MQTT. So the, what the customers can do, they can take advantage of the IO, of the IO things 4533 built in Azure, a web a AWS and Alibaba Cloud SDK and OPC UA library, which is available to easily connect to public or private cloud and SCADA application. And on the left hand side here, as you can see, we have a SCADA that is syncing the data from the IO things using OPC UA. It's getting the, um, the IO information from the field here via OPC UA. And here we have an um, MQTT service that we're using to send the data into the three different uh, cloud accounts here. And what you can also have, you can also have a remote control uh, center or control room that is syncing to syncing the data from the cloud here via MQTT. Okay. So here is the system overview of the live demo that I will show you guys on how to switch on or off the 
45 mr 24404 relay module that I connected on the IO things 4533 here, this relay here. <coughs> Sorry for that. And I'm uh, and use the MQTT protocol to publish and subscribe data to the local MQTT broker. And then the IP address of the IO things, as you can see on the screen, is 192.168.127.254. And my computer is a 192.168.127.100. And I will use a, the serial console cable here to log into the into the device, into the IO things a 4533 uh, IO modular from my computer. And I will use the, uh, the Ethernet TCP to publish and subscribe data to the local MPTT broker. And then my computer will act as a local uh, MQTT broker or MQTT server. And then uh, and also as, a, as well as MQTT client. Since I'll be running the MQTT lens from my computer as my MQTT uh, client application. Okay. I think you all understand the system here for the night demo. So let's get started. So what I've done here. I have pre-opened a uh, party here and MQTT lens here just to save time. And I see, I need to restart the session. Yeah, just to save time, I've already pre-opened uh, this, uh, this uh, party and MQTT lens. So to log in, just type in Moxa, username, password is Moxa, and I log into the device. And now I need to switch on to to the root account. So since I don't want to keep on typing sudo all the time. Moxa. Okay, now I'm on the root account. So now what I can show you is the IP address of the of the units. To do that, just type in if config, then you'll notice that uh, the IP address of the unit on the first interface is 192.168.127.254 which is where I'm connected. And on the other one is set to DHCP, so there's no IP here. Okay. And then I can show you that we can ping the computer here. Why do let me just clear the screen. Can ping, I can ping my computer from the IO things. The IP address of my computer, as you can see, is pinging. Okay as well as on my computer I can run command prompt then i can ping i have things here so what i'll do is i'll just leave it pinging continuously here okay all right so without wasting time i'll navigate quickly to where i start my script for this demo like so. demo oh, sorry case sensitive demo. If I say list, and this is the one that I'm going to use, mqtt.py is the one with the script that I'm going to use. So before I, I, I can run the script, I'm just gonna show you that I've imported a uh, MQ, MQTT. I've imported IO Things 4530 API. That's the one that I said. If you extract that library file, you need this is the one that you're going to use into your Python script. And also power.mqtt as my MQTT client to allow the device to act as an MQTT client. And also, here yeah, you notice that my broker here is my is the IP address of my computer. And then it's you connecting to the MQTT uh, default port here, yeah, which is 1883. Yeah. And then on this demo here, I, I'm going to subscribe to two, I, two topics. I think it's going to subscribe to two topics, which is a uh, uh, relay one. And then I'm going to use relay one as our um, to publish, to publish and use relay two to subscribe just to save time so that we don't have to do publish and subscribe. I'm just going to show that we can have two different topics, okay, or more topics. Okay, I'm just gonna close the script. 
okay? And then here on the left, on the right hand side is the MQTT lens, which is on my MQTT client application. And here is the settings here. You see that this is my broker, specify your broker uh, IP address. And then here is the default port address here, okay? And because here the IO thing is going to subscribe to these topics, also this application here, we need to subscribe to the same topic here, relay one, as well as relay two, okay? And then you'll notice that when I run the script here and, and on the IO things, so relay one will receive the message since I said I'm going to use it as a publish. publish. So to do that, we just say Python three. I'm running the script now. MQTT and my slot is slot one. And for channel zero, which is the first relay. Okay, press enter. It's going to connect, then it's connected. Then you see we got the message here, which is one. And you see the relay value is one on this when we're still on the higher things if i press enter again the value changes to zero and then you see that we receive zero here meaning the relay is off then i just on the relay again to one and you also have one again here okay so we have published the higher things now so what i can show you now is how we can how the higher things will be subscribing now to relay two and then you'll see the topic here it says relay one Really one, so that's the one that has been publishing. Now, if I publish, oh sorry, my bad, sorry. Topic needs to be here, and then the message here that we see on this relay uh, two here is zero, and if I can put one here, it will change to one. You see, it's one, and we also have the message here that we is also subscribing to his own message here, change to zero tends to zero, but change to one, tends to one. And that's it guys, we managed to publish and subscribe. That's it for this demo that I wanted to show you. And then for, for if we still have time, I can use maybe five or four minutes just to show you how you can run the C codes, the sample codes that uh, I said you extracted by navigating quickly to, maybe navigate quickly to Hoboxa. And then press enter and I'll just list. Then you will see this is the sample code that I was talking about. After you extracted that sample.title.gz, then you can go into that sample. Then you see you got other things. Then you see we have got the C code and also the same as the Python code. So I'll just quickly use the C codes. Then for slash API IO, that's what the files are. The set list, and these are the files. So uh, because I connected the relay um, module on the IO, con IO things, I will just run the one for, for the relay and specify my slot one and channel. I can say channel two, doesn't matter. And then you will see that the value here is one. And then the relay channel is two. Then on, off, on, off, on, off. And that's it. Okay. Now I think we can go back into the presentation. So that was it for the live demo. Okay. So let us take let's take a look at, at the conclusion of the IO things. Here's the conclusion of the IO things 4533. So with the IO things 4533, it has got the built-in cloud connectivity capability to allow users to easily send data to the cloud. And it also support various programming languages so that we discovered that we covered on this presentation, which is C, C, and Python to allow both IT and OT users to develop their own application. And they equip, the device is equipped with high performance CPU and real time operating system. And it also has got the system wide cybersecurity design to prevent data loss or access from unauthorized people. And the 45MR, yeah, for the 45MR modules here, 
you'll notice that for the digital input, we got the 16 channel as well as the eight channel. And on the 16 channel, we got a PNP and NPN. And then on the eight channel, we only have the PNP. And for the digital output, same applies. We have got 16 channel, which is sync, and then the 16 channel, which can be source. And then on the A channel, is, you have only source. And for the relay module, which is the one I use on this presentation, is only four channel. Okay. If you got, let's say, six channel, then you have to purchase, let's say, two, two uh, relay modules. Okay. And for analog inputs, you got the uh, eight channel for zero or four to, four to 20 milliamps and eight channel for zero to 10 volts or zero to 12 volts, okay? And for resistant temperature detectors, you got up to six channel. And for the thermal thermocouples, you got up to eight channels, yeah, okay? Any question, guys? You can also unmute yourself, then we can talk instead of maybe typing, that will save time, it's still fine. You can unmute yourself, then we can, you can ask us, we can still give you the question. And there is a question from, from Prince Manana. Hi, does the unit have local data locking via USB or SD card? Data locking via the USB. Can we use mosquito amplitude broker? Yes, yes. At the at the, at the moment, the, the, the amplitude broker is, is 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 installed on the unit since we were using the power dot amplitude. So the device to for that to use the amplitude protocol, it needs this amplitude. Uh, I mean, mosquito service here. Is the, remember, it's the service for uh, for amplitude protocol. So yes, we can have that service inside the broker here. And for having the so you need to lock data into the into a USB or SD card. That one I'm I'm not sure about. So. Hello everyone. Um, I found sorry to budge in there. Um, yeah. yes, the the unit does have an SD card slot. Um, and yes, you can lock the data. Um, that you want, depending on how you write your script. Obviously, uh, you should be able to write that data into that SD card for local logging. Okay. Oh, thank you very much. Perfect. All right. Uh, I see Kitiku um, also asked a question about um, cloud services come at cost. Um, yes, unfortunately, um, cloud services like Azure, AWS, uh, do charge you for um, their services, depending on what type of service you use. Uh, but you can open free accounts uh, with these cloud services to test your um, applications and test your uh, solutions and afterwards um, depending on what type of services you use uh, you can then um, you'll then be charged for those services so services like um, putting data into a SQL database for example that that would come at a cost on a per message or per uh, transaction basis and here you are, uh, Prince ask again, can you write a Python program to act as a controller PLC EGC for monitor the tank level and open a valve on a set point? I think you can also write that since you can connect the, the sensor into the other things on the serial port, then you can write your script. Yes. Yes. So you can do that. Okay. But using Python. Using Python, yes. Okay, okay. Yes, you can use Python uh, or you can use C. C uh, yes, C as well. C or C plus plus as well. Yes, you can do that. Ah, okay, that's good. Okay, any other question? Let me keep looking. Are there any? There another question here seems quite a new technology. Are there any demo units available so we can familiarize ourselves with the programming environment? Um, I think they are actually online, um, online uh, programming environments where you can actually uh, try your Python script and see if it works and um, test your Python script online. So you don't actually need the hardware. The hardware is just um, um, a basis for you to, to control your IO. 
Um, but I, I'm sure if you talk to our sales uh, representatives, you can talk to Brigitte. Um, we can possibly arrange uh, something with you, um, maybe for you to come visit our office once the lockdown is over or some, something like that. And there's another question where, from Julian, where he asked, can you use only C or C++ or Python? Yes. And at this moment, the, the, this one is support that, it support these two languages here. APIs from Moxas, it supports C or C++ and Python. Can it interface with any PLC? Uh, I'm not quite that sure about this one, but if they- through Modbus, Yes. Um, I'm not 100% sure. In your programming language, you would need a Modbus, um, a Modbus header file. Am I right, Franz? Sorry. With um, if you want to use C to interface to a PLC, you would need a Modbus um, library. Uh, not, not really. Not necessarily. If is, if the is there a Modbus if, library already. If let's say for instance they, they use C or Python, then, then they want to read from a, 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 a Modbus device, let's say a flow, then they want to read that. Uh -huh. they, they can use that, they can configure the post for the serial interfaces, then into their into their into their into their, into their script, yes, that's where they need to add that library. Yes, you're right. Yes. Sorry. I was trying to make it logical. So yes, yes. Into their script, they need that library for for, for, for Modbus. Right. Yes. Any other question? Yes. Uh, one last question. Yes. You mentioned you mentioned uh, write modules. If I heard you correctly, I think it was one of the first slides. Yes. Where mm -hmm. you had the um, the right modules and the left modules. Yes. I wanted to find out about the left modules. What type of modules are those? Then uh, so the left is Wi going to be serial. Oh, okay, you want? You can go ahead. It, it will be cellular. There will be a Wi-Fi unit. Um, so cellular. Sure. You say cellular. Yes. Yes. Oh, with a SIM card, so you can. Yeah, LTE. Okay. Yes. Okay. 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 And a Wi-Fi. It's going to be serial. Um, Wi-Fi. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, what is the other one? I can quickly remember. Okay. On, on, the, on the cellular modules, do you have part numbers on those modules? Uh, at the moment, they're still under development. They're still developing. Oh, still under development. Yeah, they're still developing oh. them. Yes. So once, okay. they, once they're done and released, you'll see if you go to the Moxa website under these IO things, you'll find those modules. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. At the Great. moment, what is available is 45 MR, so MR for the for the right, like I said, for the for the for right, right, for the okay. right. Okay. Yes. Good. Okay. Thank you. See. Okay. Uh, Franz Jan Kutzer asked, "How many serial ports is available? Is it possible to write a custom protocol on these ports?" Um, if I want to communicate with third party devices. Yes, of course. Um, if you know C and C++ or Python, uh, you can most certainly write your own header file or um, custom uh, a programming file or function to create a custom protocol to communicate with your devices. Um, and how many serial ports are there? Mr. Franz, if you can just answer that. There are two serial ports. There are two serial ports. So I have both of them, you can either configure them for RS-232 or 422 or 485. And if you don't know how to do that, you can also ask us, or there will be a video on our RJ Connect uh, Tech Hub channel, where we're showing how you can configure the serial ports on the, on the Linux, uh, on the Moxal uh, Linux, uh, on the Moxal cool. Industrial Linux operating system. So there will yes. be a video also showing how you can configure those serial ports. And we're also here to support, so we can also show you guys how you can do it, we can help you. Okay? 
And Prince, are uh, you answered? Yes, 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 I very much answered. Okay. And you say that the video for communicating with the flow meter via Modbus RTU, we'll find it on the, on the portal. Not, not the video for configuring the serial port. Let's say for, in yeah. the, for, in, let's say for instance, your serial meter is, uh, I mean, your yes. flow meter is using a Modbus RS4852 wire, right? And then okay. your, board rate, your board rate maybe is 9600. So you need to configure okay. that serial port for to be the same uh, as, as your flow meter. Okay, okay. Yes. It okay. Can, can it do, can it communicate via Modbus RTU using yes. registers? Yes, yes. That's, R, that's Modbus RTU. Okay, okay. Yes. Yes. That is Modbus RTU. Okay. Yes, so you can connect any other uh, Modbus serial devices there and you configure the port the same as your serial devices uh, interfaces. Okay. Yes. Okay, and you say the video, we can find it on the website. Yeah, we're still website. creating those videos that will be available on the on, on, uh, RJ Tech Hub uh, YouTube channel. Okay. You'll, yes, you'll find it. Okay, no, okay. thank you very much. You've answered all my questions, thanks. All right, thank you, Prince. Happy to get it. Okay, we will do. So I can cast it now. Uh, here's another question from uh, Kitu, Kituku asking, so I can cast it more than one flow meter. Yeah, if you're using RS4852 wire, then you can daisy chain the unit on, on one part. So you, on one part, you get up to 32, you can connect up yes. to two units. And also on the other part, you can connect up to 32 units. So you got up to 64 units that you can connect them. Okay, any other question? Okay, all right, that's it guys. Uh, please stay tuned with us on the next webinar this first day where I'll be showing uh, you guys the, the Kravis uh, PLC controller on uh, where I'll be showing how to program the unit and how to incorporate the Kravis devices onto codices. And then we'll do the left demos on how to create the codices project, how to add the Kravis PLCs into the project and how to add the IO modules into the project. And yeah, and also, and how to add uh, the Modbus uh, RTU interfaces into the project. Let's say for instance, if you have a flow meter or energy meter, that you want to connect into the into the PLC controller, how you can add the Modbus RTU uh, adapter into the project, so that you can read from your from your from your energy meter. So please stay with us. That's the one. So we'll be using codices. And remember, guys, we are still here for you. Please feel free to take screenshot of our contact details during the lockdown. If you have any information regarding codes and orders, please feel free to contact Brigitte Papafon. And for account, please contact Kim Adams. And for technical support, please contact Johan Hayserman. And thank you everyone for joining us today. I hope you enjoy and learn something from this webinar. Be safe and stay safe. Bye.